What's up, guys? I envision success. I envision it genuinely. Success, multi millionarism, multi millions, the complete and utter freedom to do whatever the hell I want. My grandparents are alive. I'm holding a party. I'm doing whatever I want. That garage downstairs in my house, I think occupied by some other people, I bought it. Don't care. It's a Rolls Royce and a Bentley parked there. Two symbols of luxury, complete and utter luxury for me, and a Lamborghini Urus. Two symbols of complete luxury to me, parked there. I added three floors to my already floor four house in Vietnam, making it seven floors, a skyscraper, literally. I've added a pool, I've got glass embellishing, modern, it's modern, it's, what's the word again, contemporary. Modern, contemporary, beautiful architecture, looking out of the city below. It is so beautiful. It's gorgeous. Every single realm you could possibly imagine. That is success to me. And I vision it. I just finished a meditation session for 10 minutes. And I literally was so enveloped in my thoughts. I could not even think. I could not even meditate. I was living a scenario in which I was 20 years old. I just reached a million, uh, a million subscribers. I was doing a VIP exclusive mil uh, 1 million subscriber um, party at my house. My grandparents are alive. My mom is alive. Everyone I know is alive. I live out the day in the morning. Um, in the morning, that the first and se uh, the second floor that I installed was still being, like it was, it was finished. It was, but the third floor that was, in, that was installed, along, along with the elevator stuff, it was still being finished somewhat. But later in the day, like in the midday, it was finished. I hug. I, I saw my mom come up the elevator, and then she was just in shock, impressed, and in awe, as 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 well as my grandparents. And I just told my grandparents and everyone else in my family that I had sold my company that I was working on for two years, three years, because I'm 17 now. I'm 20 turning 21, or 20 just or just a fresh 21. I'm pretty sure I turned 21 that day. That I worked with work my company for. Uh, that was called. I'm um, pretty sure it was a tech company coding company for three years, I have my YouTube shit on the side, I have my e-commerce company on the side, I have my boxing gloves company on the side, that I'm doing somewhat side hustle, as a part-time side hustle, it's not a full-time side hustle, I have this all like, I'm living this situation, I'm living in there, like, it isn't me now, 17-year-old Jimmy, brokey, it's 21-year-old Jimmy, rich as fuck, accomplished as fuck, strong as fuck, I have everything in order in my life, that is like, the, that is why I envision, that is genuinely why I envision, and my mom comes up, she's unchanged, Agents, we don't really age that much of that. How do I say this? <laughs> Clearly. I mean, we do age, obviously. Everyone ages. No one's immune to the grips of time and death. But Asians, I don't know how, our genetics is just supreme. We beat it all. We just look the same for like a good 20, 30 years. It's just weird. It's weird. It's, I, I always say it's the best genetics, but, you know. And next to black people. Black people, black people don't crack. Black don't crack, right? And they have the best bodybuilding, fighting, like, athletic ge ability genetics. But of course, but in terms of how I say this, overall aging genetics, ages take the top. That might be biased, but it is what it is. Anyways, back to my my envision. Back to my vision. She's coming up the stairs, and then my my, my mom gets out of the elevator, or my grandma, my grandparents get up the go up the stairs because they like to use stairs instead of elevator. I think elevators make you lazy, even though they got an elevator in the house. Anyways, they come up. My mom comes up, shock or impression, and I break out the news to them. I sold my company for 300 billion Vietnamese dong, dong, which is it's a funny name for the currency. I don't, I don't care. It's funny. It's, it's funny dong, ha ha ha. But that's around 10 million pounds. And then they just, they're like, whoa, whoa. And I remember there's like this, this scene in my head that I played just like a, a week ago. The reason why your parents don't respect you as an adult is because the time that you've been an, a, a child comparatively to an adult is like it's much higher for the child so you've been a child longer than you've been an adult therefore they see you still see you as a child they haven't seen you and seen you as an adult yet because you haven't put in that work necessary to prove yourself as an adult as a man or as a woman you're still like a little girl to their eyes still a little boy to their eyes right and i genuinely envision this and i just and i'm just so fulfilled and happy and just joyous and i just can't describe these emotions i'm like i'm almost tearing up a bit in, in there, in that situation, I'm always tearing up a bit, I, I don't really cry a lot, I probably cried twice last year, and it was like, it was a, it was a big family argument and everything, and 
it was tough. My mom called me a failure. She was disappointed in me. And one tear rolled down my eyes. And then I cried another time. When it was, um, I fully cried. Like, I never, I've never felt that way before. In a year as well, in a year plus. I haven't felt that way in a long time, to me at least. A year, a year is relative, right? A lot of people wouldn't see a year as a lot of time. But for me, like, I'm still young. One year is still 117th of my entire life. Therefore, I still see it as a lot of time. So I hadn't cried for a while. And I, like, I genuinely spewed tears because... I was like, oh, I got to, um, my life, I don't, I'm, I was super uncertain about the future. I was super like, how say this, worried. I hadn't envisioned success like I did now. I haven't had that most burst of motivation. I hadn't seen what I was capable of. I haven't seen it. Anyways, back on the point. So I was just like, I was so happy. And <laughs> I was like, mom, I said in Vietnamese, obviously, because, you know, I speak Vietnamese at home. I was like, mom, and I was like, I was hugging her, kissing her. And then I saw my grandparents come up the stairs. I was like, I was hugging them and kissing them too. I was just so happy, fulfilled, impressed with myself. They were impressed with me. I told them the numbers. They were impressed by the numbers. And obviously it's materialistic, but you know, that's Asian culture, you know? What was it again? I'm not even sorry. That's like a big part of Asian culture. What's that? That, that comedian guy said, um, who made it really popular, but I already knew about it. I have it on my wall as well. The, good, the new year, good luck thing. But a, a big thing that Asians say is like, uh, for Happy New Year is Gong Shi Fa Sai. I just the Chinese and the, the Malaysians, not the Singaporeans say that as well. The places where they still speak Chinese, they say Gong Shi Fa Sai, which means like, I hope you get rich. And it's like, to Westerners, they're like, whoa, it's all materialistic. Da, da, da. To Asian people, like, yeah, that's a dog. Because riches, wealth, you know what that gets you? Freedom. And freedom and peace of mind is one of the most important things. That all Asian people can understand. We like it's like it's just why you don't see some big Asian movement that we're just marching out all the time. Like it's no offense to the BLM movement, right? It's no offense. Put my hands up, right? You guys, you guys suffered. I understand completely, but we don't do that. You know, it was that old grandma Asian lady who during COVID where she got beaten up, and then like she got like uh, racially attacked. It was a hate crime. Asian people were, like put her down to work. I'm pretty sure we uh, some people, a lot of people donated her money, and she's like. She got through her bill, was fine, and um, I hope she's okay, you know, everything. But for the most part, we're like all single minded, put our heads down, work, get the money, get freedom, and get out. <laughs> most Asians, like, they go into Western country, they realize how the generator is, and they just leave after they make, the, make their money, which is totally my plan as well. I, I want to be in Vietnam, like, I want to live in Vietnam uh, when I'm like 20, 21. For most of my 20s, I want to live in Vietnam and just experience life there. And then maybe I'll go ground career as well. Go around Korea, China, uh, Japan, Japan, but Japan's pricey, bro. And apparently, I was talking to my Japanese friend, he was like, yo, you don't want to go to Japan, bro. It's like, it's good for holiday, but everyone there is depressed, bro. You don't want to live there. I was like, is it that bad? <laughs> and it was back to my vision. We, the day goes by quick. And then the builders come, and then they see the cars, da, 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 da. impressed. Everyone's fucking impressed, all right? And I talked to my family there as well, my extended family. I was, talking about how, I was talking about how important wealth was to me. And then especially this guy who I talked to before. He said he said before, like, I see, he said to me like this. He patted me on the shoulder like this. Like, Jimmy, obviously in Vietnamese, obviously he doesn't know a speck of English. Like, Jimmy, I really see you as successful in the future. And he's going to be telling that like this. With like a big smile on his face. He's like, I'm glad I'm related to you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, I do see myself as successful, but we all have to, right? If we don't see ourselves successful, like, it's hard, it's hard not to. Like, if we don't have that level of belief, that delusion. We don't. If we don't, if we don't have that, how do I say this? Almost delusional, hope, hopeful belief within ourselves. Then what do we have? Because our family won't believe in us. Like, you always hear the story. My family, they give it up on me. Like, they, they, they never believed in me. My mom was my biggest hater. Some such shit like that. Of course. Because you've been a child more than longer than being an adult. And they believe in like the school system and shit. Which originally coddles you. Makes you think everything's okay. The safety safety net, right? Safety net, right? I always hear that shit. The safety net is as thin as a piece of paper. What? Okay, okay, okay. No, it's fine, it's fine. I'm wrong. I'm a college dropout. No, it's fine, it's fine. You go to school. You get a job, right? Part-time working. Or working when you can. Full-time when you can. Like night shifts. School in the morning, homework in the middle, night shifts. It's a hard life, but I know somebody who does that before. She was, she's a strong woman, a strong girl. I remember her. It's possible. 
you finish your A-levels, you don't you don't really know what you're doing in school for the most, most part. Kids don't, at least at our age, like 16, 17, 18, like, fuck, you don't know what you're doing in school. 20, even 20, most guys, most kids are like, they're kids, they're young adults, right? They're, they're like, oh, yeah, school, fun, no, 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 university. Like, you finish uh, college or university at like, 18, 19, you go to uni- you go to university, you like you leave when you're twenty three or twenty four, and you're just a cod- a coddled piece of shit. They have you have you have no real world skills that you've developed. Maybe you work some few part time jobs. You don't understand the value of money. You're just chilling around, partying, having fun. Like university is one big booze up. Of course, it's an amazing opportunity, right? It's a, but if you do use it right, of course, like if you use it right to network, you go to like a high esteemed college, uh, college university like uh, Oxford or Cambridge, and you meet a bunch of rich people. You network, you get, you got a lot of connections. Of course, it's amazing, brilliant. But for a lot of people, they don't use it that way. They people that are confused and lost, they don't know what they're doing with their time. One big booze up. They get like 30, 30, 40 grand in debt. One big booze up. Bullshit, waste of time. And this time in my brain, like the way I used it, seventeen to twenty, three years. I got two years and five months. No, in five months, I got two years, four months, and. And 20 days. Uh, 20 days. 20 days. 30, 10, 10 days. So yeah, 20 days because uh, 10th and then roughly around, yeah, 4 months, 20 days. Because I, I on the 10th of July, that's my birthday. That's when I turned 18. I turned 18, guys. That's so weird. That's so weird. I, I'm weirded out by that. Yeah, it's fucking weird. I'm scared. Mommy, I'm scared. <laughs> And it's that time that people spend in school. I spend on entrepreneurship. I spend on e-commerce. I spend coding. I spend making up my my product, my service, my company, and and then I spend that time looking for investors, looking for people that the uh, thing that will buy my eventually buy my company because I I want to go private with that shit. I want cash. I want I want to go to Dubai. I want to be a fucking expat and get all my money, personal income tax. I, I I've thought about all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? And get all my money, and then I can freely spend it. Of course, like. It is a hassle. You, you, you go to Dubai, you go to, go, go to all the da, 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 taxes, da, da, da. but I can always switch country for taxes after. I can just I can keep my British passport. I'll, I'll be a Dubai citizen and then for a while I'll get all my money and then after I'll live there for like a year or something. But And then I'll go to Vietnam for most of it. I only have to be in like Dubai for like a month or two or like maximum like three months in order to be registered as a Dubai tax citizen. So, oh yeah, you live here, you pay tax. But then I'll, I'll probably be living in Vietnam after. I'll put my money in secure investments all, all across the world. I'll, put, I'm, I'll just... It will, securities, investments, uh, trust funds all across the world. It'll pay me out slowly. I, I, brought, I can live on like fucking... In Vietnam especially, 1000 to 2000 a month. If I make like 10 mil, like I said, I can obviously bump that up. But 2000 a month, like big, like big investment needed. Something really big I want, like house, real estate investments. Sure, I'll spend the money. But if it's like for daily usage, 2k a month, perfect. 24k a year. Amazing. Food, bills, what the fuck? What do I really need? Gat, car, mortgage, car payments. The fuck, I don't care. Vietnam, I get to be around my family and parents. Like, I can live a That's a modest, modest living. I don't care. Anyways, more importantly, it's midday. I'm talking to my family about why I became successful. I got like a fucking big ass bicep. Right now, I've got small ass biceps. <laughs> I got small biceps and I, I don't have abs right now. I've got like a two pack. That's it. Two pack Shakur. What is my cat doing, bro? God. Oops. I meant to move my camera so you guys could see. I'm very, very passionate at the moment. <sighs> Sorry, I blocked the spot here. Say hi to the. Like subscribers, um, to three subscribers. <laughs> Sorry, my glass is hurting you. <laughs> You're adorable. Adorable. Okay, go. Okay. It's midday, I'm talking to my family, my extended family. And my grandparents are present, and my mom is slightly present as well. I'm like, I'm in a place where I've renovated with my own money, and it's beautiful now. It used to be like a bit of a shithole, and then I renovated with my own money, and it's absolutely gorgeous now. And then I 
This is just a vision, by the way. This is a vision. This is not real. Of course, I wish it's real. <laughs> I don't wish it's real. I want it to be real. Oh my god! Ah, hustle culture. I'm joking, guys. I don't believe in hustle culture, by the way. I believe in um, smart work and hard work. But then you need rest. Like you can't just be an idiot and not rest because then you just all work yourself and die. The fuck. Anyways, I. I meet my meet up with my family, extended family. I bring uh, my mom over. I pay for a ticket to go to Vietnam. I remember vividly like putting my card details because I remember all my card details because it's useful, right? Because like for example, if you lost your card or like you forgot your card somewhere and then you left that home or some shit, you've put you've got the details for the most part. You just type in the details, type in so called, type in type in the account number, type in all this shit, password, uh, the the phone numbers of the thing, da 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 da, and then you don't have to like fucking waste your time looking at the card. You just type quick, done, easy, boom. It's a good, like, um, how do I say this? It's a good backup. It's actually genuinely a good backup plan. Anyways, I pay for a ticket. I pay for my ticket. And I pay for first class. I still remember. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't remember going for first class. I remember it was a first class ticket. And it, was, it was a vision in my head. I was talking to everyone, like, I'll pay first class. I, I remember the ticket in my head. I, I had a ticket in my pocket. Because I'm a fucking snobby, big piece of shit. I want to show off, right? <laughs> what can I say? I'm an asshole, okay? Anyways... We go, we link up at the thing at my great grandparents' house. My great grandma is thankfully still alive at this point, um, thankfully, and she's rapidly approaching uh, 90, 93, I believe. No, she's 90, 90, she's approaching 90, and it's worrying because she's very old and she has uh, dementia, and it's very, very sad to see. She doesn't remember my name. She used to remember my name before, and used to remember who I was a long time ago. I still remember this when I was five years old or six years old. I was in Vietnam, and she still remembered me, and we used to play around, and... Yeah, it's hard to penetrate her memory unless you're always there, always present, which is like, it's always still difficult. Even the people that are constantly around her, the caretakers, still very, very difficult for her to remember them. It's it's, it's tough. It's, it pains, pains, it pains me, hurts me a lot. So I get to spend time with my great-grandma, and my great grandma's already dead, but literally, uh, it's like a sad thing to say, but she doesn't know because she has dementia. But um, yeah, anyways... We want more something more important. We link up the party, and I'm just talking to my talking uh, and just liaising with my family members. And I'm like, yeah, I paid for mom's ticket to come here. I realize the value of money. Young, like they see me when they're 20 years old, and they're like, like, oh, when I was 20, I wasn't like this. When I was like, da, 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 I wasted my 20. Da, da, da. I'm like, don't think like that. Don't think like as if you wasted your 20s because in reality, you didn't. You didn't know what the hell you were doing. That's the reality. But here's the beauty of it. If you know what you're doing, you're infinitely better off. If you read books, if you gain information, you gain insight and you actually apply that information and you apply these positive things and you actually develop on your work on yourself and you make something of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Within the 20s, within all that, that 10 years that you have, you sacrifice the 10 years for your, uh, for your 30s. You sacrifice your 20s for your 30s. For the rest of your life, you're okay. I don't think people understand this quite like, like thing like in 10 years i couldn't be rich in 10 years you can be rich in one year and rich isn't necessarily multi-million straight away it could be ten thousand pounds a month 120 grand a year people hear that amount they're like oh it's impossible da, 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 da. if you put 10 grand a month as a goal what's really stopping you from achieving it you okay so like we'll just get it let's get out of the way the economy doesn't give a fuck because the economy has always be relatively the same. Obviously, it's in a, in a rut right now. We're in economic recession in the UK right now. But there's still like, a bunch of people making a, a bunch of money during this recession. So the money is still flowing around. You can still get money, right? There's like billions of pounds going through the English market on a daily basis. You can get a few thousand. Come on. Let me go to some more, more, something more important. That's one of the things I said to them as well. I'm like, yeah, I, I was like this since I was 16. Since I was 16, I was reading books. Since I was 16, I was on self-improvement. Since I was 16, I was working on myself, trying to make money, focusing on my finances, focusing on something that, that was genuinely important. No girlfriend, all focus, all hustle, all, all on the grind, all on that shit. You know what I'm saying? So you can't compare. Don't compare. Don't compare. Do, do, what is the best possible move on the chessboard that you can do for yourself now? And it doesn't matter if you're 37. Okay, let's say, let's say you're 37, all right? Your plan within the next five years is to make one million pounds, right? Fucking hefty. But you're 37. You gotta get your fucking shit together if you're not making at least 100,000 or like 50,000, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90,000. Because if you're 37, you probably have a family. If you don't have a family, then it's a pretty low, lonely experience. But then that's a bit of a benefit because then you can focus all your all your efforts onto the fiscal um, the fiscal endeavors, right? So in the next five years, so that's when you're 42, 
on business, on entrepreneurship. And when you're 42, you have your, you have your business set up, you're earning some income, potentially look to go public or go private within a limited or C corporation or S corporation, some social so, so shit like that. I would go private if I were you and then try to become an expat from Dubai or some low tax income country like Isle of Man or Dubai or uh, Malaysia or Singapore, Vietnam. I don't, I don't know about the tax situation in Vietnam. I'm actually relatively un, 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 undereducated in that sense. Very bad. Anyways, I talk about this to my family. I'm like, just basic business shit. They're impressed by me. It's a dub. I, I, got, that, I got that confidence, bro. I got that confidence. You know what I'm saying? I bring my mom over. I'm like, mom, I brought a thing. This is, this is why I became rich because I wanted to bring her here, spend time with my family, spend time with you guys. You know, okay, we're included up in that hole, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a big, it's multiple big dining tables. I talk to everyone. I am the center of attention as always. But then after a while, after the talk is done, I'm recluse because I'm preparing for the subscriber party. Because I'm big on YouTube now. And my Vietnamese uh, viewers, shout out. <laughs> I invite them over to my, my big ass skyscraper mansion in Vietnam. And, bro, it is... Oh, <laughs> my cat. I can't see him. I'll make sure you can see him. I love you guys. You guys love me too. Oh, so close. See him? <laughs> Why are you looking at the camera like that, Fong? That's my mom, by the way. My mom as well. That's not me. That is not me. That kid is way too... No, I'm cuter. I'm cuter. That's me. Get, out, get away, sister kids. Nobody cares. That's me. That's me. Oh my god, I'm so cute. That's so cute, man. That's so cute. <laughs> so cute. Oh my god. I'm a narcissist, bro. I'm joking. I don't love myself. I hate myself. Anyways, I move on. Midday. It's it's late midday. We're preparing for the party, right? I I literally teleport between these situations. I I assume I'm taking a taxi or I'm going to, in my car, but I literally teleport between these. It's not good at all. Like it's 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 shoddy. It's sh shoddy. It's not important, right? I got the party set up. People that I've checked who the longest subscribed, and then they security pat them down. Everything. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Girls, guys, mostly guys. Come on. Girls, guys, everyone, fucking come in. Woo! Subscribe party. We see the subscriber meter. It just goes up and down, up and down. If you guys are fucking trolls, you guys are like <laughs> unsubscribe on purpose. But then I'm streaming the whole thing as well. Like it's an exclusive party for like my lo most loyal subscribers, my members, all that shit. But like you know, I put it, I stream that shit live. I want, I want people to see what's possible. Like, but if I if I do like if I actually get big on YouTube, which I actually plan. Like, what, if, come on, if I don't, if I don't get big on YouTube, what the fuck is the point? Like genuinely, what the fuck is the point? Genuinely. If I don't get big in YouTube, um, social media platforms, and make a bunch of fucking money, what's the fucking point of all this shit? There's no point, right? That might seem like, oh, but I, I it's okay, Jimmy. I spent my teenage, it's okay, Jimmy. I spent my teenage years. You're 17, relax. I saw this um, comment recently on a message, on a message saying I was worrying about myself and I'm 17. They're like, you're 17, relax. I'm like, I'm 17. This is not time to relax. This is time to stress, to worry, to panic, to work. This is the time those negative emotions compound into more negative emotions if you don't take action. If you take action and you t and think and you use these negative emotions as fuel, it will turn into positive emotions because you'll be satisfied with yourself. You'll actually be proud of yourself. You'll actually think you're worth something. Your, your self-esteem goes up because you have achievements that are worth boosting your self-esteem. You understand what I'm saying? For example, if you go fat as hell like I was before, I was fat as hell, and you lost a bunch of weight like I did. I'm going to feel some way positive about myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to feel some way positive about myself because I'm fat, because I was fat and I lost a bunch of weight and I was really, really ugly and I was insecure and I was anxious, I was depressed. Then I lost a bunch of weight. Now I feel good about myself, right? So I think people do need those, uh, those achievements that, like in a, in a video game, in a, like an Xbox achievement or some shit, in Minecraft, you get achievement uh, for finding diamonds. You feel fucking good about yourself because you found diamonds. Now you get to make a, a thing. A diamond pickaxe and you get to go to the nether which opens more opportunities for you it should be like that in real life too this is the benefit that gamers have the gamers have like gamers are here more normal people are here the benefit gamers have over normal people is that they can see the progression of life linearly you always see it like everywhere oh yeah i quit video games and then i became super successful there is a shameless amount of 
people out there who have made like who have quit video games and quit with these bad habits and quit smoking all that stuff. Not not smoking. You know, there's not really the linear developed smoking. But to video games, uh, most important, like War of Warcraft. There is so much grinding in War of Warcraft. I've seen gameplay from Asmund Gold when I used to watch him back in the day. Holy shit, dude. Anyways, more importantly, you see the linear developing life and you apply that to real life and you actually become satisfied um, thing in real life. Because it's like this, look. You grind in the video game, other video games respect you. You grind in real life, higher, higher echelon of purpose. Other real people expect, uh, respect you. It's that way. It's simple as that. So, I was explaining this to my... Um, my family as well. I, I fucking... I went on a huge rant. I went on a huge... <laughs> like a motivational rant to them as well. It's, it, it was crazy. I, I liked it a lot. It was a very, very eventful experience. Anyways, moving on to the party. I want people to know that like, if I do a subscriber meetup, like... I want like... It's all possible. Like I'm not, I'm not going to be like some one of them... I, 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 I saw PewDiePie before. He's like, I'm not your friend. Which I don't like the dynamic of. He's like, I'm not your friend. I am... Like how, how can you say that? my opinion obviously peter pie like he's been in this game for a while now he's probably annoyed by it he's used to it and he's annoyed by it but to me like i don't think i'll change that perception of um people that view me view me my viewers or my subscribers or my fans my loyal fans anytime soon because those are the people that bring you up all right and those people that can very well bring you down you know like i remember people were, like adding like what well, they added you they found your account on ps4 and then they started adding it but a bunch of people found his account on ps4 and just started stab spamming a friend request I thought it was just like quickly like, yo guys, I'm streaming, guys, stop doing that. I'll add you guys later. You know what, if you can play multiplayer, I don't mind playing multiplayer, I don't mind. Just don't grieve in it. Like, I, w I would like to have a community of people that I like minded to myself. You know what I'm saying? And I would like to be in tune with these people. I don't want to shun these people away. And then maybe because just because it's slightly annoying. I mean, PewDiePie, he's been in this game for like 10 years plus. I understand, but I don't respect it at all. I know your friend. Stop adding me. Fuck off. Like, bro, why? Why would you say that, PewDiePie? The fuck? What's wrong with you, man? This candle smells nice. I was melting some wax. I got the candle in there. I'm melting some wax. I fucking... I leaked the candle in there, so... Yeah, I really, really love the candles recently. They look really nice and scenic. This uh, melt wax as well. It's a really nice smell. Anyways, yeah, that... If I... I would have like to have a subscriber special as well. Because, um, thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like to be close people. Back to the original story that I found as well. Um, horny bastards, man. Because I, I would be running my entertainment gaming channel and my self improvement channel as well. Like, those are the big two channels and my podcast. Those are the three big channels that we're running. Like, obviously, I'll get editors and everything, and I'd be recording a bunch of videos. To me, recording videos isn't necessarily like, how do I say this? A negative experience. I don't see this as work. I see this as complete passion. And I don't, I don't think it'll change anytime soon. Obviously, passion fades. However, I have too much enjoyment from this. I have way too much enjoyment from this. I'm pretty sure you can tell from the manner of my voice from this. Like, you can you can feel my passion, my motivation, my desire. Why did I say it like that? Desire. <laughs> from the from these videos. So, I don't think I'll, I'll change it anytime soon. Unless, like, oh, I'm recording a bunch all day and I'm exhausted. And all that, but even then, I think I would still enjoy this. I would still manage to enjoy this. Because this is amazing to me. Like, imagine I can make money off this. Even, like, an income, like, a thousand pounds a month. Bro, I don't care. A thousand pounds a month. Bro. That might sound like a lot, but it really isn't. With bills, this, this, and that. This, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. You know, shit happens. Anyways. Oh, shit, it's already getting late. I need to go on a run soon. I'll probably run for, like, 10, 20 minutes only. It's, like, full sprint, like, like, a, like an absolute dickhead. But anyways. More importantly... The party is on, and it's super fun. Everyone's drinking. I make a big speech, self improvement. Guys, we made it. Guys, we did it. Da -da 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 -da. But feel free to network. Feel free to talk to everyone. There's the odd black guy, the odd white guy. Mostly Asians, though. Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese. What are you chinks, man? <laughs> Why is that even a slur? I don't understand. Where did you get that? That's like what you would describe like a damage to an armor chink. This doesn't make sense to me. Anyways, we're in the party, it's lit, and I catch my boy in the bathroom fucking some girl. 
Yeah, this is, I don't know, this is going to be like comic age restricted now. He's having the fun, fun time in the bathroom. And I go to the bathroom, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing in my bathroom, bro? <laughs> Making it all super awkward. All I hear was, all I hear is the morning. <laughs> like, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that shit, bro. I was, <laughs> anyways, this is all vision in my head. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm making it super awkward. Get the fuck out of my house. Get a taxi for them, make them go home. Those two fucking lovebirds, man. Dickheads. I don't know what happened, I disabled preview. And then... Literally, <laughs> part continues, and everyone just laughing at them and shit. But like, it's funny. Like, you know, they they they're young. They have time, right? They have their, their little fun time. But that's how that's how that's how I would spend the rest of my day. And then I just pie wraps up. Like, it's a mess everywhere. Obviously, it's a fucking party. I send everyone home. The taxis and shit. Bunch of taxis. Bunch of luxury cars. Concierges. It's like it's like a, it's the fucking high life, bro. It's the, it's the high life. I envision success. I envision the high life. And yeah, that's multi millions. That's multi millions for me. And obviously, I wouldn't spend multi millions straight away. Like I see people with like, oh, one million. I could spend it in a heartbeat. And I did, I did. I'm like, yeah, obviously, I could spend it in a heartbeat. Obviously, spending money is the fucking easy part, mate. Making money is the hard part. And one million. Bro, if you set up so you get 100 grand a year, bro, you'd be set for the next fucking 10 years. If you set it for 50 years, you set, uh, f f uh, no, for 20 years, that'd be, that's 50 grand a year. You'd be set for the next 20 years and you put in a trust fund and that could be, they could be paying you and you don't have to pay shit on that. You don't have to pay tax or nothing on that. Well, can you get tax for trust funds? Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. My, no, what the fuck is my financial literacy, man? I drink water. 30 minutes. Hydrate, guys. Hydrate. 30 minutes of just straight talking. I can't upload this, by the way. I can upload my main channel, but I can't upload it on the other channel because the main, um, the other channel, it hasn't been verified yet. I have to post more videos, and then it gets verified. But yeah, I envision success, guys. I envision it. It's as clear as day in my head. It was the worst and best meditation session ever because when you meditate, right? I have to do a video on this when I actually edit, put actual effort into this. But when you meditate, you effectively eliminate all thoughts. You don't eliminate all thoughts. You you let thoughts come and then you let thoughts go. But you push it all back to your breathing. So meditation, the way I approach meditation is very, very simple. I go to the time for 10 minutes. I sit down in a relatively comfortable position on the floor. Usually on the floor so I can feel the hard wood on my ass. I tell me to focus on as well. And then I just close my eyes and I focus on my breathing. Just deep breathing as well. Like. Thought comes. Oh, I left the stove on. Oh, no, I didn't. Focus back on the breathing. And it has to be the most euphoric. After you're done with it. After like 10 minutes of in like intensely working on this. You can go like soft breathing, which is okay, I guess. But I usually do hard breathing, which really pushes air in and out of your lungs. Makes your heart work. You feel it. And after you're, you open your eyes, you feel like super euphoric and high. Like you, you can talk about it. Um, it's really shown before. The meditation's high. While I feel high after meditation, I touched it before. And that's because you get psychedelic effects after meditating. It's completely true. Like you get a natural high because of it. And it is, it is so like liberating like you feel so focused and edged. i have double vision in both my eyes after meditating usually my double vision fades even if it's by a little bit it fades and that's i think that's like so important to me because like you're focusing in you're like because of social because of the internet because of distractions you're kind of like you're, you you've, you've developed a sense of a sense of like a i guess a lower tier or mid tier middle tier of adhd it's very common in this day and age and it's often difficult for you to focus with meditation, it literally eliminates this in all entire entirety. Back to my point, this is the worst meditation session because I couldn't focus at all. But it's the best meditation session because I got this amazing idea for the video that I'm, I'm going to post out now. Damn, my other channel, they limited the amount of videos I could post. They just said, daily upload limit reached. Try again tomorrow. I'm like, the hell, man? After my run, I have to go on a run now because if I don't go on a run, it's going to be too late. It's already 7 p.m. What the fuck? 7 p.m. Tablet. Rotation, man. <laughs> Dude, guess who's that? 7 p.m. 7.02. Uh, I don't recommend putting a tablet there. I'm only putting it there because... In my desk. It's super... 
I brought yeah, I smashed my desk, but uh, I got my mouse pad, which is a newspaper. I got some stuff to do, got some quotes on the wall, got some books I need to read, etc. etc. I got my tablet here in the corner, I got my candle, got pictures of my mom on the other side. You should never have over six things on your desk because if you have over six things, then it's easy to become clouded within your judgment. Like it's easy to get distracted, like your pens and shit. Like it's it's hard to focus. You know what I'm saying? Minimalist, like minimalist. I like that minimalist look. I like that. Everything else I tuck it away. But I know where it is and I'm relatively clean with it. Apart from right now, I'm not cleaning it at all. Everything's a mess. What am I doing? What am I doing? Norwegian. Germany. But yeah, but that's that's what that's the main um purpose of this video. I'm envisioning success. Like I want everyone in this video that watches this video as well to envision success and envision the future to be a positive experience. Do not give yourself limiting beliefs. Give yourself delusional beliefs make everyone question your beliefs oh but that's not possible but oh who's gonna do this for you oh that 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 don't listen to them hear them but don't listen to them let them let it go in one ear laugh and let it go out of the other ear because you had that self like bro if you told me because you have that self-belief in yourself because bro if you told me that jake paul one day some disney random disney channel star that i didn't know about i don't give a fuck about i still don't give a fuck about would be boxing like six six retired people, like obviously like boxing people and knocking them the cold out, that little <laughs> that type of guy, I would not believe you for a single second. I would literally not believe you. I I would there would be zero thought in my mind where you'd be like, yeah, joke. No 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 one would put that in my mind. But Jake Paul, this is why I respect him. Not a lot, but I respect him still for his work ethic. He said, I'm gonna believe in myself and I'm gonna work, right? He comes from a, a pretty wealthy family. Like, they're pretty well off, like, upper middle class. Um, they live in Ohio, in, like, a mansion. Like, I remember I saw the vlog, it was, like, back to family house, and it was, like, a mansion with, like, six floors. No, like, three floors. Like, a super big mansion with three floors in the basement and everything. Uh, be right. Hello, is this? Okay, go on. Anyway, my stepdad's come. Uh, I'll end this video. Have that self belief in yourself and envision a good life. Colin McGregor says the best. I envision success. I envision glory. I envision power. I envision wealth. I envision my family being okay. And look at where he is now. All right, you're better off being delusional and envisioning success than being so realistic and then living in a mediocre, uh, mundane reality. Okay, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye 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 bye. Is that? Oh, uh, is that? Is that too zesty of an outro? I don't know. Sayonara.